In this video, I'm going to explain how to create a table and what your table should look like if you're one of the groups who's doing a correlational study. If you're not doing a correlational study, I'll be working with your group separately to decide what type of table or figure to include in your paper. Like I said, this video is for students who are doing correlational studies, and the table that I'm showing you is, is actually a table from a student's paper, and the table isn't perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through the steps of creating this table, how the student created it, and then at the end I'm going to point out the minor issues with the table so that you'll be aware of what those issues are. First of all, I need to mention that the table is on its own page. It goes on the next page after the references. Up here, there's the running head and the page number. Right here is um, table one, and it's supposed to be um, capital T, and one is supposed to be a digit numerical, not the word one. Then you have uh, double spacing right here, and you have an extra, you leave an extra space after table one. Then you have the, the title of the table. The title needs to be a, a short phrase that's concise and also tells the reader what the content of the table is going to be. So it needs to tell the reader what to expect inside the table. So summary of correlation coefficients is a nice title because it tells the reader that the correlations are going to be presented in the table and that they're going to be the important correlations um, for the study. So you could actually use this title if you wanted to. Another possible title would be correlation coefficients for, um, for five selected survey items or, or something like that. After, well, first of all, I need to mention that the table title right here needs to be italicized and it needs to be in title case, which means all words are capitalized except for non-major words. Um, in other words, all major words are capitalized. And the word of isn't a major word, so it's not capitalized. And words like and or but would also not be major words, and those would also not be capitalized. After the title of the after the uh, title of the table, put a horizontal line going across at um, about this uh, weight or thickness, and don't have any spacing between the table title and the um, and the horizontal line. After the horizontal line, um, include the word variable right here, and then over here, put one, two, three, four, for however many variables you included. Uh, in your result section. So let's say you, you calculated correlations between four variables, like let's say age, height, weight, and IQ. Then you would stop at four. Or if you calculated correlations between five variables, like let's say age, height, weight, income, and GPA, you would stop at five because you have five variables. And um, use um, a use the tab to, to create the space between one and two and two and three. And so this should be uh, the equivalent, this spacing from one to two should be the equivalent of one uh, tab. This should be another tab, this another tab. And it, uh, it needs to be uh, aligned at the right end of the table, or at least close to, to right aligned right here. Um, and then over here, um, number your, well, after, um, after, after this line right here, put another horizontal line with no spacing. So this, the word variable and these numbers should be sandwiched in fairly tightly with no spacing um, either before or after. So these horizontal lines will hug this line fairly tightly. Um, then right under here, put one, and then your, the name of your first variable, like let's say GPA, then double space and have the name of your second variable, then double space the name of your third variable going down, and this needs to be uh, left aligned right here. And then the, your variable names in the table are supposed to be what's called a sentence case, which means the only the first word is capitalized. So, this right here actually is correct, highest exam score, but class load um, should have, well, load shouldn't have been capitalized. Only the 
the very first letter should have been capitalized. So highest exam score is correct. Lowest exam score is correct. Amount of sleep on weekdays is correct. And workload is correct because uh, in sentence case, you only capitalize the very first letter of the um, variable. Sentence case is what's also used when you write out the title of, um, of an article in a reference list. So that's the same, the same idea. So no, basically number two is the only one that has incorrect capitalization because this L should be lowercase. And under um, the last variable name, put a horizontal line right here without, uh, without any spacing under um, the very last variable right here. So just follow what this um, student did. And then right under the, this horizontal line, make, um, make an asterisk and put P less than 0.05, two-tailed, just like this student did right here. And leave this off because I'm not going to have you, um, I'm not going to have you indicate if it's significant at 0.01, just 0.05. Um, point, um, if, if it's significant at 0.01, that means that the p-value is 0.01 or less, which just means that you're um, in a, an even higher level of um, confidence that the correlation is not due to chance. But um, I'm just going to have you um, check for if, if it's significant at 0.05 because that's the um, cutoff that that really matters. Well, it's the cutoff that that's typically used in psychological studies. So uh, 0.01 is used much less commonly. So we're just using 0.05 in our class. So basically, just bring this up. Um, this p is less than 0.05. And don't include the p is less than 0.01. So you'll just have one, one line underneath your horizontal line right here. And you actually don't need uh, a horizontal line at the bottom right here. So it should, your table should stop um, with uh, this ho horizontal line and then just p is less than 0.05 and stop there. Um, So um, these, um, so over here we have the correlation coefficients in each column. So right here, this would be the this negative uh, 0.21 is the correlation between class load and GPA because it's two and one. This negative 0.4, uh, no, I'm sorry, this negative 0.542 right here is four and two. So it's the correlation between lowest exam score and class load. These numbers up here are just the abbreviations for the variables. So over here, one means GPA, two means class load, three means highest exam score. Um, you just don't write out the variable names up here because it would look too cluttered and there's not enough room for them. So each correlation is just at the intersection between the two variables that it goes along with. So, um, so here we have column three, and we have row one. So 0 .99, 0 0.194 is the correlation between variables one and three. And you don't have, um, well, it doesn't, it wouldn't make sense to include the correlation between GPA and itself, because that would just be one, it would be a perfect correlation. Um, so just leave four dashes like I did here. And it wouldn't also wouldn't make sense to include a correlation between class load and class load. So just have a dash right here. And the dashes will follow the um, a diagonal line going down like this. And now I want to explain how much spacing to have um, right here after your variable names. Well, your correlations, um, your correlation coefficients need to be um, right aligned, meaning that they stop at the right end of your table over here. So if you have, if you only have a small number of variables, like let's say three, you'll have more space 
um, between your variable names and the correlations because all of your data would just be um, over here and there wouldn't be anything over here. But if you have seven correlations like, like this student did, you'll have less space here between your variable titles and your, um, your correlations. But there needs to be at least space. Um, there at least to be needs to be enough space so that there um, so that there's a little bit of breathing room. You don't want you wouldn't want only one or two spaces right here because it would be hard to see where the um, the title the variable title stops and the correlation coefficient start. It would it would look too crowded. And the the word variable right here needs to be centered. Uh, so it needs to be at the center point of your variable titles. So notice how the longest variable title is amount of sleep on weekdays. The word variable should be centered, um, center aligned with that. So notice how if you go to the center of the word variable and you go straight down, it's centered with this longest title right there. Um, and then so yeah, it's not supposed to be way over at the left. It's supposed to be centered right here. And then I just need to point out a few issues with the student's table. I said I would wrap this up by pointing out um, some issues. So this student um, put this in bold, the table one. It's not supposed to be bold. It's just supposed to be in regular text. So this is correct, except it shouldn't be bold. Um, summary of correlation coefficients um, should be um, starting right at the beginning of the horizontal line over here, and the student had it a couple of spaces over. Um, let's see, this, this horizontal line, the second horizontal line is a little bit too low. It should be the, um, the same distance from, from the text as this top line is, so this should be more symmetrical. Also, uh, this notice how class load uh, isn't in the sentence uh, case like it should be. Like I said, the L should be lowercase. Um, also, this P down here at the bottom where it says uh, P is less than 0.01 and P is less than 0.05, it should be lowercase P, um, not uppercase. Also, the correlation coefficients inside the table um, should be rounded to two places, not uh, three places like they are here. And I just have one um, more point before we wrap up this video. So if you have a, um, if one of your correlations is significant, you need to have uh, at the 0.05 level, which is what we're using, it needs to have one asterisk at the end to indicate that it's significant at 0.05 like this. And you're not going to have any correl, you're not going to be putting two asterisks on any of your correlations because we're not indicating if it's significant at 0.01. So you'll either have one asterisk next to the correlation or nothing, depending on if it's significant at 0.05. And if it if it is significant at 0.01, you'll just put one asterisk. Um, because if it's, if it's significant at 0.01, it has to also be significant at 0.05. And we're just going to indicate that it's significant at 0.05. And that's um, that was my overview for this table. Um, if you have any questions, um, just let me know. You could also refer to the um, the manual, the uh, APA style that should have some more detailed information about this type of table. There's also there you should be able to find some online resources, but make sure that they're from a reliable source. And yeah, and that's it for this video.